Thank you for listening to Depictions Media Radio. I was always taught that doing business was supposed to be kind of a cold and ruthless thing. And that intuition, personal feelings, anything outside of that coldness had nothing to do with business and should be left out. That in order to be good at business, I had to be stern and unwielding and just move forward without any thought or concern about anyone's feelings because they had no place in business. So, this is all changing. We're finding a softer, heart-filled way of doing business that not only helps our fellow human beings but it also eventually will help our planet and today we're going to listen to an interview with um, a friend and a uh, business expert who puts intentionally puts intuition into business and her business plan and helps others to do the same so that they can find what they need to find as their own version of success and helping others around them and their communities grow just the same. So let's get started. Welcome back, everybody. Um, I'm here today with Deanne Raidu, and she is a spiritual muse and mentor, professional speaker, best-selling author, and intuitive business wizard. And she's here today to, to give us some tips on life and business and all that all that stuff that we really need to need to hear about at this time. So, um, welcome to the show, Deanne. Thank you so much, Michael. It's such a pleasure to be here today. Yeah. So, um, why don't you elaborate a little more, especially on the intuitive business wizard? I'm sure a lot of people are really curious what that really means. Well, you know, I wanted to have some fun with it, obviously, and using the word wizard. And, and you know, I have been called a wizard from time to time um, because I work more in the energetic space. And so I've been an entrepreneur um, for much of my life, uh, for the last two decades. And, um, and so I've learned a few things along the way. And um, part of my journey in being an entrepreneur was actually a very spiritual journey. And so... Um, I have really d- dove into my soul and, and really deepening my understanding with who I am as a human on this earth and how I'm supposed to shine my light and how I'm supposed to show up in the world. And so, you know, I, I take the intuitive energetic approach to running my business and I help to show other people how they can do the same thing so that they're really living their life on purpose and doing the things that are really fulfilling for them and therefore fulfilling for the people that they connect with. Wow. That sounds really important. (laughs) It is. And I think a lot of business owners kind of get into this mode of, you know, I got to run the business and I got to crunch my numbers and I got to, you know, Mm -hmm. and we can get really lost in this more egoic. And when I talk about ego, I'm talking about, you know, the part of our mind that can really keep us stuck on, 
um, certain paths or put blinders on. You know, our our ego mind, um, you know, hundreds of years ago kept us from predators, right? Right. But our ego mind has lost its way. So the ego mind comes up in our businesses all the time and it says, well, you don't really know what you're doing or you can't say that. People will think you're crazy, right? So the ego mind has this voice of its own. I, I've heard of people call it the itty bitty shitty committee, um, given their ego mind names, but nonetheless, my point is that sometimes as business owners, we can get wrapped up into this world that's maybe even a bit more extrinsic outside of us, a bit more superficial. And when we start making decisions based on that ego mind, what happens is we end up going down a lot of rabbit holes. We end up um, doing a lot of things that maybe are not really serving the business, not really serving ourselves and finding ourselves spinning out of control, getting exhausted. And I'll tell you, that was my story. Um, you know, I was a single parent um, when I started um, one of my most recent businesses, Your Holistic Earth. And and um, I, was, I was preaching to everybody to take care of yourself. And here I was um, running myself to the ground. And I actually had, um, you know, I, I got on the verge of an adrenal collapse. Um, and I realized oh my gosh, I'm not walking the talk and I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do because I was so caught up in this facade and in this way that I thought I had to be. And so once I got rid of that and understood myself and knew how to put my ego mind in place, then I could really trust in my in my truth, in my intuition. And that is when everything changed for me in business. Yeah, well... Okay, we're we're talking about intuition in business, but traditionally, way way back when, um, when we'll go back to my university days when they're taught when they were teaching me as a young engineer economics and and marketing and stuff like that. That intuition and and business, you could never put those two together because intuition is completely unscientific and right. completely un and. Now we're we're at the point where where we where we have to listen to our intuition, right? Yeah, we really are, and and we're learning more about you know intuition and that there's actually science to back it up. So this isn't no it, this is no longer a woo woo magical thing, you know. Um, this is something that science is actually showing us. If you look for studies that they've done at the Heart Math Institute, the heart actually receives information before the brain even does. And yeah. so once we start to recognize this, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, maybe that's why my gut was telling me not to go with that person or not to do that thing. Mm -hmm. um, and so it will it brings in this, this uh, additional layer into the business when we start to really pay attention to the intuition and we start to listen into it. It, again, it helps us to make more clear decisions and decisions that are most serving for both you and the business. And one of the things, one of the practices that I have is I actually communicate with my business. So I want this to really um, soak in for those listeners out there because this was a really powerful shift for me. Um, you know, we tend to, you know, we've been taught, you know, you are your business, right? You are your business. And we've heard it time and time again in the business world. But I actually am going to invite you to think of it very differently and shift your perspective on that because we represent our businesses and we put life into our businesses. But the business actually is a separate energetic entity from you. And so in recognizing, again, that everything is energy and that the business has a separate energy from you, yes, it's connected to you, but it still is separate from you. And so once you recognize that, you can start to see or go into the experience of communicating with your business. So I started to get in the habit of waking up in the morning. I would say, um, you know, my previous company that I just gifted last year is called Your Holistic Earth. And I would say, good morning, Your Holistic Earth. What are the main things I need to know from you today? And what happened is I would pause and I would hear information or I would receive a feeling or I would have a knowing that intuition would pipe up. Because I was stopping and pausing and acknowledging the business, and it was responding to me. And so I would get all sorts of advice and wisdom from the business, 
which helped me to make way better decisions and not be stressed about the decisions either. So it served me in such a huge way. I started to talk about it and tell people, hey, do you talk to your business? Treating your business like a partner is the best thing you can do because your business responds energetically to that attention and you will get information that is vital to helping your business succeed. Wow. And now that, 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 okay, we're back to that word intuitive then, but that sounds counterintuitive. <laughs> I well, mean, it, go, it well, kind of goes against what, what we're, we, what we were taught as, as in school, right? Yeah, yeah, I know. And so, you know, that's why it's such a paradigm shift for a lot of people because they're like, what? You know, but it really is, it's about, um, you know, pausing to pay attention, you know, and allowing that that energy of that business to communicate with you intuitively. And so, you know, I think a lot of times people, you know, they say, well, think with your head, not with your heart when you're running a business. Um, and I would I would argue that that's the, the best thing that you can do to exhaust yourself and, and deplete the quality of your life. Right. Well, you know, the, the, with that, you you may have a good point. We started our businesses to improve our lives, right? Right. I mean, I know I did. That was my intention. It was like, oh, my God, I'll have flexibility and I can spend time with my kids. But most business owners, we our businesses are created by default and not by design for most of us. And so, you know, part of this process of going into your heart and into your intuition is also recognizing that you have the ability to design and create exactly what you want this to look like. It's not about the clients. It's not about everybody else who says you need to run your business in this way. It's how do you want it to look and be very firm on that commitment to creating what you want it to look like. And, you know, like I said in my story, I was running ragged, you know, telling everyone to live a quality life. And here I was working all hours of the night, not having enough time for my kids, for my own health and wellness. And so we see that a lot in businesses because they place these expectations or they have these beliefs about what society expects of them in creating their business. And then they get into their business and they think, no, I got to, I got to hustle hard. I got to work really hard in the business to have success. And they get lost in that trap, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I, I, I know so. Sometimes some people say that that there was a dream behind that business, and do we do we at times lose that lose the, that dream of of what our business is going to do for, do for us and what we were going to do for the world with our business when um, through the process of building the whole thing out with all the hustle and the bustle that 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 we're supposed to be doing while we're doing business. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it, I think it dims the spark. I think it dims the passion. I know it did for me, you know, I was so exhausted. I was like, oh man, like if this is what it takes, like if I have to be a martyr, you know, um, in order to get the message out, I guess I'll be that. But, you know, and so I, I, I got to that point too. And I just thought, you know, um, this isn't serving me and, And so I had to make some changes within the business, and I did. I hired people. I got a team developed, and that was like my saving grace. It was the best thing I ever did for myself. Um, But that's also because I paused long enough to listen. And I was scared to hire people because I was like, I'm not making much money here. How am I going to pay other people? But in doing so, that's actually what was such a huge catalyst for the growth of the organization was being willing to really listen in and to trust that I was going to make the right decisions because I was listening to my heart. But I think you're right. I think sometimes the dream fades, but I also want to share too, sometimes the dream changes. You know, I ran my, my business for seven years and then I was called to do something else. So I gave it away, you know? And, and so my dream changed the mm-hmm. vision of, 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 of what I wanted to do in this world changed. And that happens for some of us too. And we have to be willing to know when to pull the plug, right? And um, and so, you know, in my process last year, I, I really had to go into 
a, a really honest place with myself and go into spirit, um, you know, and really look at, you know, what was important to me and, and what was my mission and what was my divine purpose in this world. You know, I know I was meant to start your holistic earth. I know that that organization, I, I know that that was what I had to start, but I also recognize when I had to pass the torch. And I think a lot of business owners get really stuck in that, not being able to pass the torch off and, um, and create a, a huge amount of pressure. And then again, you know, the passion keeps fizzling and they keep getting more and more exhausted uh, doing, doing something that, you know, it's, it's time to move on from. Right. So, um, I don't know how to how to put this. I I don't want I don't want people thinking you sound crazy <laughs> by saying was it like a little a little voice in your head, but re- really, or was it just a combination of things that when you when you took the deep breath and you went and exhaled and it just it it became part of the you could see the whole picture. Yeah, I mean, I think so. For all of us, we receive energy in different ways. So if I'm coming from more of the the background of empaths and intuitives, there's different ways that the universe communicates with each and every one of us. And so some people are clairaudient. That's clear hearing. So that's when I hear the voice inside my head or I get like a channeled message that is very divine that definitely didn't come from me. Um, so clairaudient is one way that I receive messages. I'm also clairvoyant. So I'll receive messages in visualization. So when I started Your Holistic Earth, I actually had a visualization of community and of the cards I was supposed to create. Like I, I saw saw it in my mind's eye. Um, and then there's clear sentient. That's the clear feeling. And the clear feeling, the clear feeling is all about, uh, especially for more empathic people, you know, they just get a gut feeling or they have a sensation of some sort. Mm-hmm. And then you have your clear cognizance. Now, Claire, cognizance is clear knowing where sometimes, you know, when you just know something, Michael, and Mm -hmm. you don't even know how you know it, you may not even have a logical explanation for that, but you just know it. And so that's Claire cognizance. So Claire cognizance, Claire audience, Claire sentience and Claire um, uh, buoyancy those are some of the main ways. There's other ways too, but those are the main ones that most people receive information. And so for me, I'll receive a variety of, of ways. Um, and for others, there's one that typically is more dominant. You know, I know people that are very clear audience and they always hear the message in their mind. I don't always hear the message in my mind. Sometimes I get a feeling, sometimes I see a vision. So, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that, um, I invite people to just pay attention to pay attention to, you know, that gut feeling, pay attention to a vision that you had, um, be curious about it because once you start to engage in those intuitive communication means, then oftentimes more and more information comes. And so you kind of, once you open the door a little bit, you know, it opens a little more and a little bit more and a little bit more, but it requires your awareness and your um, desire to be curious. And so, um, and so that's basically my process is when I have a question or if I'm not sure to do something, you know, I'll either talk to my business or I'll bring in my spiritual team, which is for another discussion and have a conversation and just say, okay, what am I supposed to do about this? Show me, you know, tell me whatever, you know, just show it to me. And oftentimes I'll get an indication or a message that comes through in some way. Well, yeah. Your 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 day and your, the the direction of of what you do from day to day seems to have a really interesting path when, uh, from the time you wake up, because you 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 said that you you wake up and you say hello to your business, right? Mm-hmm. And... Yeah, I mean, there's a few more things in my morning routine than that, but yes, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm just going. I'm just going along with with some of the intuitive stuff that you've already said, right? And it's like, yeah. but it's exciting that um, that that you're 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 constantly listening, listening, feeling, and curious about what is what your what what is going to happen. It isn't like yeah. it's a static thing, and. 
I think that's something important for our listeners to realize that it isn't going to be static, that it's, that we got to like kind of go with the flow, right? Yeah. And in fact, it's very dynamic. I mean, there's so much insight and wisdom that comes from everything as I move through my day. It's absolutely amazing. Now, most of us are like going too fast for that. And and for me, I mean, I was always going a million miles a minute, right? Like I got to get this done. I got to do this. And I was always like buzzing and going. And I would find that I would make mistakes or I would stub my toe, you know, a lot more often. I was very clumsy because I was so busy, you know, being not present, (laughs) right? I was so busy thinking about, okay, what else do I have to do? And I have to do this and I got to go here. And so um, I was missing out on a lot of insight. And I think for most of us as human beings, this is our life, right? Like I got to get this kid to this and I got to do this and then I got to do this. And so we're always thinking about all the things. And so one of the biggest lessons that I learned, um, actually uh, one of my coaches, Christine Monahan, she's the one that taught me this, Um, slow down to move ahead. And so I started to slow down and I started to take on less. Um, I, you know, opened up my schedule a bit. So I had buffer time so that I could nourish myself and take care of myself. And in doing so, again, that intuition has more space for the information to come through. And so I would notice synchronicities I would notice when something would come up multiple times you know if something's showing up in your world and it's happening more than once pay attention to it people there's a reason why you know follow Mm -hmm. the breadcrumbs right and so um, but being able to slow down in order to do that was so critical because I wasn't you know I was so busy and caught up in life that I wasn't slowing down enough to actually receive the messages And so that's a really important piece as people are choosing to step into a more intuitive space in their business is to allow yourself to slow down so that you can receive those messages. Yeah. Well, to be a little more personal about it, what was the message that Deanne needed to hear? Oh, goodness. Um, Well, I mean, there's been a lot of, like, major ah ahas. But I think the biggest one over the last year, you know, last year before COVID really started, um, I was really doing some redirecting. Um, My spiritual practice was growing quite a bit. And so I was running two businesses full time as well as raising two children. And I, I knew I had to make some changes because I knew if I really wanted to again, keep walking the talk and being authentic to myself that I had to let something go. And so um, in the conversation, I actually had like, if you can imagine, it's like meeting with your counsel. You know, I just invited my spiritual team, my businesses to kind of be part of a bit of a meditation. And that's what I did. I sat with them and I said, okay, guys, what am I supposed to do? And the message was so clear. It said, you're going to give your company away you're going to host a contest. Mm -hmm. And at first I was like, what? Like, come on, like you guys, like why wouldn't I sell the company? Of course, my ego mind popped into play and all these things. Right. Um, But, you know, it really came down to why I started that organization in the first place. And it was to make the world better. It wasn't about making money. It was actually to make the world better. That was my fundamental purpose in in starting that company. And so I thought, well, yeah, that would be totally out of alignment if I went and charged money for this company um, to sell it. And so I, I did a Willy Wonka style contest instead. And that contest was so rewarding. I learned so much about myself. The people who got to experience being part of it absolutely loved it and grew by leaps and bounds. It was such an enriched process. And not only that, but it actually increased our revenue significantly. So it actually, you know, I, I mean, the list could go on about all the benefits to doing it that way, but it was the best thing that I ever did. Um, and the minute that I made that decision, by the way, Michael, I will add to this, the minute I did that, my other business also exploded, like went like skyrocketed it. it, wow. it. Yeah. It was amazing. Wow. So you, 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 you picked the, pick the right path. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I could argue that we always pick the right path. It's just that sometimes 
the the path is a little bit more treacherous, <laughs> but <laughs> but usually it's for yeah. a reason of growth, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, but yeah, it, that that one was a big one for me, and I wouldn't have done that if I would have been more stuck in my ego. There's no way I would have given a business away if I was stuck in my ego on that one, right? Right. So it gave me this freedom to like really live authentically and be who I wanted to be and show up how I wanted to show up. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, rem- I met you actually, uh, it, I guess it was somewhere in the middle of your holistic earth. Um, and yeah, I, I think like a good five years ago now, probably. Yeah. Hey? Yeah, and yeah. I thought the, your holistic health was, was was a fantastic idea. Um, it was a great great network for um, for um, people who wanted to hit, to help heal the earth one person at a time. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I met uh, a group a group of people who were actually healing people. They were they even if. Um, if they were actually like one was a physical therapist, physiotherapist, um, and it wasn't just about collecting the uh, the insurance money from. I think it was uh, where, if, according to where she sits, I think is Vancouver Coastal Health. It wasn't just about collecting that money. It was about how she actually was going to wake up every morning and help people with mm. their therapy. Just. Just yeah. be be better, right? So, yeah. um, and there was a lot of she, and that was just one example. There were so many people that that uh, that really wanted to heal our planet. that were in that yeah. network, so um, yeah. I thought it was a great thing. And I'm glad that you gave it away <laughs> because maybe maybe if you would have sold it, I've seen a lot of this happened to a lot of businesses that that were doing great things that they wound up on a chopping block to be sold for parts instead of being kept as a whole. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we see that a lot. And I really think that, um, you know, the new president, Jenny Rice, is absolutely amazing. Actually, she's from your neck of the woods. She's in Chilliwack and uh, uh, BC there. And um, but she's amazing and she's keeping it fully intact. Um, In fact, she wants to make it, you know, a family business as well, which I really loved. Um, But but her vision is like it's mine times you know, a hundred. Right. And so it's so rewarding to see that, like, I was able to create this foundation for her and now she gets a leap from that. Like that to me is so exciting. And I just can't not wait to see what she comes up with because she's doing amazing things already. Yeah. So, okay. So let's get to, get to a couple tips here. Um, because I think that people, um, that our planet is actually screaming to us that we need to learn to do business in a, in a different way, and that we need yeah. to do it more in accordance with the energy that our planet and our universe is is, is putting out there. Um, so, um, as an intuitive business wizard, do you have a couple of tips to actually just start on that path for well, our business? Well, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first thing, um, and I know this was a game changer for me, was I went into my soul. I really did. And, and I think as a business owner, if you're disregarding your soul and your spirit, getting to know who you are, um, your business will fall short, you know? Um, you, again, you're the one breathing life into your business. But if you're out of whack and you're not taking care of yourself and you're not listening, then, you know, the business suffers as well as you do. Um, so do the work. Do the soul work. It's not as scary as I think people think it is. But if you focus on um, filling the soul bank first, I like to say, fill your soul bank. The money bank will fill. Um, that's what I'm really talking about is, you know, what feels really good for you, being really honest with yourself, understanding yourself more deeply, and taking the time to do that work. I think it's critical in business. 
Hmm. So that's the first thing that I would suggest you do. And how you do that's up to you, whether it's reading a book, whether it's listening to, you know, some so podcasts, whether it's hiring a, a more spiritual coach like myself, whatever that is for you, um, just make sure that you're doing something in that area. Um, the next, of course, you know, like I said, start talking to your business, you know, slow down enough that you can actually listen to your business and make more conscious and more heart led decisions. Um, and so that's the next one is like absolutely hands down, talk to your business, start communicating with your business. And, um, the, the third piece of it is recognize that you are creating everything and that you have the power to design your business in a way that serves you and therefore serves the people you wish to serve in a way um, that creates this incredible ripple. So it is really important to ensure that, um, you know, that you are, you know, creating boundaries for yourself and really being conscious about, okay, what hours am I working? How much do I really want to make? What kind of people do I really want to serve? You know, get really clear on that vision. And I know a lot of people say, well, I, I created a business plan. It's like, yeah, but in the business plan, it might have, you know, the functional pieces of the business. But, like, what is it that you really want? What's the life that you want to live? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, I get to, well, when the kids are in school right now, they were pulled from school. But I get to take them to school. I get to pick them up or at least be here every day for them. I get to have my workout time. I get to have my social time. Um, I get to be in my business when I say so. And so it's given me this incredible piece of empowerment by coming into this place of really conscious creation and, and, and really intentional design of my business. And so recognizing that we have the power to do that and that we don't have to have these businesses made by default, you know. Um, and then I want to end with this. Business is actually easy if you allow it to be. And I think a lot of people think that, oh, running a business, you've got to pound the pavement, you've got to hustle hard. But it's actually easy. It actually is easy. Yeah. And if you want to know more about how to make your business easy, that's, again, a whole other conversation that we need to have. But, um, you know, running a business can be easy. Um, we just need to get out of our own way. Yeah. So, um how do people get in touch with you to, to find out how they can make their business easy? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, um, I absolutely, I do have a free gift for any listeners. So um, you can reach out to me at rosehope.ca. That's R-O-S-E, like the flower, the rose. Uh, and hope, as in hope, I'm hopeful. Um, H-O-P-E dot C-A, so rosehope.ca, and um, you can reach me out there. If you listen to the podcast, just contact me and let me know you heard the pot, this this interview, and, and, um, and I will send you a link to book a free session. Okay. Um, how about we do this? Uh, we'll make it easy for people to, to, uh, to remember that. Uh, just have them, do, if you, in order to receive the gift, if you type in, type, um, type in, into the contact information depictions media um uh deanne will will help you out how's that perfect perfect love it easy to remember right <laughs> yep you so, got it yeah um it's been really great catching up with you again as i um I had been, it's kind of it, it, it getting back to the intuitive part, right? And the listening to all these things. I Just before you called me just a few weeks ago um, to, to catch up and, and, to, and to say, Hey, Michael, I'm still here. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I, I had this picture of, it, it was a memory that popped in my head um, of being um at um the uh physiotherapy place in Vancouver uh, the last time I saw you for uh for a your holistic earth event and 
shortly after that, I got a phone call from from you saying, "Hi, I'm here." <laughs> See, there's your intuition right there. Right. Everything's energy. When we start to see the world through an energetic lens. We start to recognize how interconnected we are, and there's something really magical about that. Yeah, it was. It I was, love it. it. It was. It was actually. Um, I. I was actually like thinking of. A, I wonder how she's doing. I haven't heard from her in so long. <laughs> And, yeah, um, I just love it how that happens. Yeah, and I just love I just love love your energy. It's um Aww. you're you're an amazing person. So, um Aww, I feel the same about you. Thank you, Michael. All right. So, thank you for listening today everybody. Um go to rosehope.ca and you're going to see a keyhole that's going to say unlock your potential. Yeah. And <laughs> open it, uh, put, everybody has the key, just uh, unlock it and go in and talk to Deanne and find out what she's, what she knows. Um, amazing. And, you, and she'll help put you on the road to an amazing life, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'd love to be able to do that. Absolutely. All right. All right. Thank you again, Deanne. Thank you so much. All Thanks right. for listening. Okay.
This show has been produced by Depictions Media. Please contact us at depictions.media for more information.